Hi, I'm Elise. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing something very festive. So I'm going to be starting work on my Christmas dress. I'll jump over to the design so that you can see what my plans are for this and then we'll go from there. Okay, so this is my plan for my dress. Um, I'm going to be doing a princess themed bodice with this nice little like slightly curved v-neck um, and then a very gathered rectangular skirt. Um, I really don't want to hem this. And also I want that kind of iconic 1950s silhouette. This is going to be a very 1950s dress. Also admire my washi tape. Like look at that. So cute. Um, so we're going to be doing a very full skirt, which is probably going to use uh, five yards of fabric. Um, luckily, my fabric is wide enough that I'm going to be able to get my bodice pieces from like the little strip that's left over. And here are my materials as well as my plans. So the skirt itself is going to be about 25 or 26 inches long. I want it just below the knee. And then it's going to have the lovely bodice that I talked about. We're going to do a lapped zipper in the center back, which was really common in the 1950s. And then I'm going to, of course, do pockets um, on the side seams. So, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take my five yards of fabric. I'm probably going to rip down it because I don't want to cut <laughs> the whole five yards. That'll take forever. So I'm probably going to rip it. And what I'm going to have to do is rip it so that I've got the full length of the whole five yards. And then I'm going to split that in half, rip there, and then split one of those halves in half so that I've got my back and then my side seams because um, I really want pockets. Um, and then I'll just uh, surge the edges as needed since I can do that now, which is really nice. Um, so this is going to take five yards of cotton, which I will show you in a second, a yard of black cotton for my bodice lining because I realized in my last dress that the rayon lining is kind of finicky, honestly, for your bodice lining. Like with the princess seams, it's just going to be a lot more fiddly and it's going to be a lot easier to just do this out of cotton. So <laughs> I'm going to do a black cotton for my bodice lining and then three yards of my black rayon for my skirt lining, which I'm going to probably do either a three quarter or a full circle skirt because I want this dress to be able to go over a petticoat really nicely and um, there has to be room in it <laughs> for the petticoat. So um, I want maximum swoosh. <laughs> I want it to be really fluffy and swishy and lovely. So, um, and then also one long black zipper um, because this is going to be a lapped zip. I can just use a regular one. And I think I should have one in my stash. If I don't, and I only have an invisible zipper, I'll probably switch to invisible for that. But I would kind of like that little detail of the lapped zip. So part of my inspiration came from this pattern Vogue S4465. Um, I really loved the detail of the neckline on this. Um, I think it's beautiful, but I didn't really want it quite so off the shoulder. Um, I also didn't need it to be full length because it's not meant to be an evening gown. It's just meant to be, you know, sort of a, a day dress slash cocktail gown that can, you know, do both. I also found this pattern on Etsy, however, it only came in bust 34 and bust 38, which neither of which will fit me. And I really liked the white version of this, but the neckline was a little too high, so I kind of combined the two. So this is the fabric I'm going to be using for this. Um, I have five yards of it. It's just a quilting cotton. It's this lovely green and gold metallic. I think it's supposed to be mistletoe, but I'm not 100% sure on that because um, I don't really know anything about mistletoe. <laughs> it was like a plant. So with that, I'm going to jump right into it and we're going to start working on drafting the pattern for this because I'm going to be taking a princess seam bodice block that I just finished a couple of weeks ago and we're going to be turning it into my design. So let's go ahead and get that started. So on the first day of this project, I needed to start with my pattern drafting. Um, I did this while listening to a prickly alpaca video. Um, I'm going to do a little kind of highlight of all of the creators that I listen to while I work because I don't actually just sit here and work in silence. Um, I know that it kind of looks like I do sometimes, but I usually am listening to other creators while I work on my own projects. So I'm starting with a copy of my back princessine bodice block. 
I drafted this to fit myself a couple of weeks ago. I think I still need to make a few tweaks, but it's pretty dang close. So um, my very first change is just altering that back neckline because I want it to be like a QV back. Um, that's a really easy to change to make. You basically just figure out how far down your back you wanted to go, draw a line, and then draw a line between that and where you want it to hit the shoulder. <laughs> I had determined that I wanted my straps to be about one and a half inches wide on this dress. Um, so I took the one and a half inches, split it between my center back and side back pieces to get where the strap line needed to be. Then I drew a straight line between those two points, the one at the shoulder and the one at the center back, and then curved it out because um, having it actually be straight would probably fit my body a little bit weird and also it would be kind of odd for the where the strap connects to the front pieces um it would create kind of an odd angle so this was one of the easier pieces to do i'm also erasing my uh cut on fold marking because i want a center back zip and then i just need to add some seam allowance because this body block does not actually have any <laughs> just super fun um it's fine <laughs> it's fine it was a choice that I made. The next piece that I needed to do is my side back piece. I once again found where the strap needed to end to be a one and a half inch strap instead of, I don't know, four inches or whatever it actually is. Um, drew a line there and then curved it out to my arm side line. Um, that was the only change that I made on my side back piece at this point. And with this one, I believe I was watching an Ariel Bisset, Bisset? I don't know, an Ariel Bisset video. Um, I love her house videos. They're very soothing. Okay, so I've got my fr side front piece, which is the one that's going to go through, I think, the most change in this entire process. Once again, I marked where my strap needed to end because it's, you know different than the original so we're splitting that difference of the one and a half inches between the two front pieces again and we're going to curve that down into the arm's eye again and initially I thought this was the only change I needed to make um <laughs> I was very wrong about that so I am just gonna add the seam allowance again and then of course we are going to do a mock-up because um I don't want to make a pattern and have it be completely wrong. And now we've got our center front piece. Once again, just narrowing up that top strap so that I've got a one and a half inch total strap width. And then we're gonna create our neckline. So the way that I did this was I actually measured on myself how far down I was comfortable with it going. And honestly, I probably could have taken it like an inch lower. And at this point, I have been working for a while and I'm listening to an Emolution Stardew Valley video. <laughs> so once I found the point at which I'm comfortable with my neckline stopping, um, I used my French curve to create the first curve, which is sort of a sweetheart neckline-ish thing. And then I flipped it around and created the curve that meets up with that from the strap. And then I, I did end up correcting this a little bit because I feel like it wasn't quite as exaggerated as I wanted it to be. Um, so I, I changed that a little bit. Okay, so I have got my pet. Whoa, that's blown out. Okay, so let's try this again. <laughs> I've got, <laughs> oops, I forgot my pattern uh, traced again because I did my mock-up and I have a couple of adjustments I'm going to make, so I will mention them. I'm not going to show the actual doing of them, but I will show it before and after on at least the side front piece because this is the piece that needs the most changes because of course it is. Um, so I feel like my center front piece is just fine the way it is. I'm not going to make any changes to that. The side front piece I have copied, and I'm going to reduce the bust curve a little bit. It's just a little, like, too much fabric, and I somehow ended up making it, like, a full quarter inch too big um, on that section. And then the other thing I need to do is 
lower my armhole by an inch on both my side front and my side back piece. The side back piece does not need any other changes really other than shortening it by like a quarter inch, which isn't a big deal. Um, <laughs> but this I need to lower by an inch and then I'm actually also going to um, make this part of the like strap thing a little different. Uh, <laughs> And then the last thing I need to do is I need to adjust this because right now this piece goes too straight up and down. It actually needs to curve in a little bit more based on the way my body is shaped. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, slice, I'm going to slice it through to like approximately where the bust point is. It doesn't need to be exact. Um, but I've got it marked on my mock-up where I need to do. So I'm going to do a little slice in all the way up to here. And then I'm actually just going to like take it in a little bit as if I had a dart. And then I will need to redraw my underarm curve once I do that. But um, those are the only real changes I needed to make, which is awesome. Um, everything else seems to fit me correctly. Like the waist feels right. Um, the length of it is correct. My school dress, which is similar to this in the fact that it's a princess themed, you know, dress. Uh, the bodice for that was always a little too short. And this one I think is actually like spot on lengthwise. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make those adjustments and I'll show the before and after, especially on this pattern piece, because I think this is the only one I'm actually tracing a copy of. The other ones have such minimal changes. I'm not worried. Um, so I'm going to make these adjustments and then I'll show it and then we can start constructing the dress, finally. <laughs> okay, so I have my side front pattern out. Um, you can see it's quite different from the original as far as like the angle of the, the strap and stuff. Um, hopefully I didn't do it too much. Actually, I might have. I might have to correct that. But anyway, so what we've done is we have just kind of removed a little bit from the bust area and then we have done a little cut here and then just lower the armpit. That's it. Um, so, so the only other changes I need to do are adjusting the side back so that it has the same, so that it, you know, has the same low point. <laughs> um, and then once I'm done with that, I'm just going to snip off a quarter inch of the bottom of the two back pieces and then we are ready to go. So I'm going to do those things and next time you see me, I'm probably going to be cutting out fabric. So this time I'm going to be ripping this fabric. So the two back pieces are each going to be about 36 and a half inches. And then my front panel is going to be 74. I actually ripped both the width of each panel and the length to get my lovely 27 inch skirt panel. Um, I went with 27 to count for seam allowance and things. Then I surged the raw edges of my skirt because those are the only ones that are actually going to be exposed. Hello. So uh, I have got all of my main fabric cut out. I still have to do the lining, but I actually may have forgotten to pre-wash that, so I'm doing that right now. Um, so I have got all of my main fabric pieces cut out, so I'm going to go ahead and start working on my bodice. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think it'll take that long to put that together. Um, because it's just like your normal princess seam bodice. So you've seen me do that a few times. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working on that. And then um, I think today is basically going to be constructing the 
main, out, like the outside pieces of the dress. Um, and then tomorrow's probably gonna be putting together the lining, which I don't know how much of I'm gonna film, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my bodice sewing um, and I will walk you through what I'm doing for that. Okay, so here are my bodice pieces. Um, this is my center back, my side back, and then my front and side front. So I'm gonna put together my front pieces first. So set these aside. And first things first, I'm going to stitch together my center front right here, which is just this line. Um, and I have to be very careful because so much of this is on the bias to not stretch anything. Um, I think I'm actually gonna stay stitch both of these pieces first. The long, this one along the neckline and then this one in the armpit just so that we don't get any weird stretching. All right, so it's together. Let's do our center front. After I stitched my center front and side front pieces together, it was time to do the back, which was just attaching the center back and the side back pieces. Um, I did not attach those at the center because there's going to be a zipper there. I then pressed everything. Okay, next up is uh, attaching my back pieces to my front pieces. Um, I'm not going to attach them at the sides, I'm only going to do shoulders because uh, I'm gonna do the burrito method, which requires leaving the side seams undone for a bit. So I'm going to attach these at the shoulders and then we're going to move to the skirt. Next up, it was time to start working on my skirt. I first attached the pocket pieces. Um, I went over how I do this in more detail in, I believe, my Dior skirt video. Then I pressed the pocket pieces away from the skirt. Stuck the two skirt panels with pocket pieces right sides together and stitched along the edge. And then I press the seams open. Can we just appreciate how much a uh, skirt this is? <laughs> like, it just keeps going. It's gonna be pretty great. And then at that point, my uh, bodice lining was finally clean and dry after I did my pre-wash, so I cut that out while listening to an infinite drift minecraft stream. <laughs>
Once I finally got to work on day three after a nice breakfast, I pulled up a Haley Marie vintage video while I worked on my bodice lining. This was put together the same way as the main fabric lining, just, you know, with black cotton instead of my pretty fancy green festive one. Once I had my lining together, I went ahead and trimmed all of the seams on everything so that I could get started with putting the two bodice pieces together. So I have got my bodice pieces put together. We have the lining here and we have our outer piece. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these right sides together. Uh, we're doing the burrito method. So you have to leave your side seams undone initially. I'm just gonna stick these together. And we're gonna pin this and sew around the neckline first. Once I had my bodice and lining attached at the neck, I clipped my curves and then trimmed all of those seams down so that they were not bulky and so they turned nicely. Then I understitched it. Okay, but like, how crisp is this neckline? Oh my god. Okay. So next step is to finish the burrito method, which at this point involves um, turning this back inside out, shoving all of the fabric into <laughs> one of these sleeve hole things, and then stitching along the armhole, which is gonna be so, so fun. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna finish that process, uh, and then we'll have a finished bodice and we can start working on the last steps of the dress, yay! Also, lol at these like, booby mountains. Um, that's hilarious looking, like, we got like a, <laughs> it's like when you're whipping cream and it's like stiff peaks, but for your bubbles. So yeah. <laughs> I totally am a mature adult, thanks for asking. Once I had all of the burrito method stuff done, I trimmed the remaining seams and flipped everything right side out. We were done with that part. Big progress has been made. We have a bodice, which is really exciting. So um, I've got the sides put together. I've got, well, just everything put together. So next step is to gather my skirt panels down to fit my bodice. Look at all that green, oh my god. I have all these ready to go, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew my gathering stitches in just the front panel and gather that, and then the back panel and gather that, because um, I found out with uh, my petticoat that I made that I have not put the video up for yet, 
um, that that was actually a lot easier than trying to gather the whole thing at once because I have more control. So I'm going to put those gathering stitches in and then we're going to gather the skirt down and attach it to the bodice. And then once that is done, it's zipper time. Um, so we're in the home stretch here and I think I am going to probably build to finish this whole thing today. And if not, tomorrow morning. So I put in my two lines of gathering stitches as per usual. And gathered the skirt panels down to match each of the bodice sections. Those being the front and then each of the back panels things. Oh my god, look how fluffy it turned out. So I have finished gathering down my skirt. Um, I'm gonna pin it to my bodice and then we're gonna have most of a dress. Then when I was done gathering, I stitched the bodice to the skirt, which was so exciting. I was very careful to keep my gathers pointing the correct direction so that they didn't get twisted or uh, put it odd angles. Okay, so I am about to put my zipper in. I'm gonna do a lapped zipper. This is the uh, DK sewing book. I just keep it as a reference um, near my sewing table because I keep forgetting how this particular zipper insertion works. Centered zipper, got it. Invisible zipper, got it. For some reason, the lapped one though, I keep forgetting the exact like steps. So um, I'm going to go ahead and sew up the bottom part of the back seam of my dress um, up until the point where my zipper is supposed to go in. Um, I'm going to do, I think, an 18 inch zipper, but I got to measure the spot first. Okay, this is just a PSA uh, stock up on zippers with longer lengths. I only have a 14 inch and that is out of all of my zippers. Could have sworn I'd set one aside for this project, but I forgot, apparently. Also, I added something to this dress that I have not in the past and I have intended to before. And that is a little hanging cord ribbon string things um, so that your dress is supported by more than just these straps so that you don't end up with stretching. So um, these are stitched in at the waist, just an uh, eighth inch grow green ribbon. I don't know why this won't focus on my hand. Okay, change of plans. I am going to do an invisible zipper and there's only one real reason why I'm doing it. I purchased some zippers online a couple years ago with the intention of them matching one project and they didn't. But like, look at this. Look at that match. Um, it's it literally is like the exact same green. So I'm gonna do an invisible zip, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed. And next time you see me, there's gonna be a zipper in this dress. Okay, so I have the zipper in. I'm getting really tired, but <laughs> I just need to, um, I just need to sew in the bodice lining on the sides and the inside, and then I also need to make my skirt lining really quick, which I'm not going to show. Um, it's the same process that I did, like, exactly for the skirt lining in my witch dress, um, this year, so... If you want to see that process, I'll put a card to it um, on whatever side the cards are happening. Um, but that's all I've got left, and then we have a dress. So um, I also need to hem the outer dress thing itself, but that's literally just me folding up a half inch of fabric and hemming that because it's a rectangle. So Okay, so I have my lining pinned on um, to my dress. Uh, so I just need to sew around this edge here. After that I'm going to hang the dress overnight so that um, this lining can stretch on the bias as much as it's going to because um, it is a half circle skirt. Um, and then I will hem it tomorrow morning.
the last few steps, I did the morning of day four, which also happened to be the day I filmed the reveal. I went ahead and hand stitched my bodice lining down to the zipper and along the waist while watching a Four Keys book arts video. Um, they just recently released a beautiful binding of a Christmas carol, and it was very uh, thematically appropriate. <laughs> And it was just a gorgeous series of videos. Then I hemmed the dress and it was finally ready for the reveal. Thanks for watching and happy holidays.